introduction. So this is uh, Yuigi Minaga and Dr. Mohan Aryanagam talking about left transparent corneal laparoscopic nephrectomy. As you can see from the diagram, we first put a 10 mm port at the left rear fossa, followed by 5 mm port at Charles Power Point as a camera port, and 5 mm port just on the costal margin uh, in the left upper quadrant. Later, we put 5 mm assistant port laterally. I think the main point here is to not go behind posterior to the kidney, and uh, once this step is completed, we need to one, uh, drop the, the entire left colon down and uh, taking care not to enter gerotus fascia. So we go between the mesenteric fat and the gerotus fascia, uh, fat? Gerotus and in, this, fascia, yeah. Yeah, in this, this, this video here, you can actually see it's quite well demonstrated, the egg yellow fat of the mesentery um, as opposed to the, uh, d the salmon pink uh, fat of, uh, of gerotus. Yeah. In this section, we're mobilizing the spleen and um, again, it's a very important step in the left uh, in the left nephrectomy, and I generally perform this fairly early in the piece mm. to try and drop the spleen and the pancreas um, away. Yeah, and I think it's important that you have a nice retraction onto the, beyond the spleen to show you where you need to go, isn't it? Yes, I think you have to push the the retractor beyond the spleen mm. so that it's you can actually mobilize push it away properly without actually sticking something into the side of the spleen mm -hmm. to make it mm -hmm. bleed. Yeah. Um, and that will allow optimal um, mobilization and the spleen needs to be mobilized all the way down so that you actually cut the uh, peritoneal attachments on the lateral side yeah. on the lateral side wall that are holding the spleen in place yeah. uh, so that it actually falls away completely. Yeah. Um, and again being mindful of the uh, the pancreas. Yeah. So I guess that's a landmark if the spleen sort of falls away from you that's probably enough that's how much you should do yeah. there. Yeah. Yes, but pretty much you should be able to see psoas at the um, at the upper pole then mm. you know you've okay. mobilized the spleen enough. Okay. Um, in a skinny patient perhaps you may not need to do as much but mm -hmm. for the, I would generally aim to have psoas in the upper pole done and that's actually the hardest part um, of a left nephrectomy is to, to get the upper pole freed. Yeah. And here we have the uh, con continuing the mobilization of the, the bowel quarterly, um, again with some good traction, um, using a grasper and making sure that uh, we stay in the right plane. Uh, and this is an avascular plane, um, if you're actually in the correct part, if you're in it properly. This plane is often a bit different when it's a nephrourethrectomy for urethelial carcinomas. There's often a um, desmoplastic reaction and it may not open up as cleanly and particularly in dissecting it off the, uh, the, the iliac vessels and the iliac bifurcation, uh, which is not relevant in uh, nephrectomy for renal cell carcinoma. Yeah, but sometimes even when you're doing this nephrectomy, you can see the iliac pulsation, common iliac pulsation when you're going down to the lower area, isn't it? Yes, and definitely. Be careful the yeah, in smaller patients. So yeah. I think the smaller patients, um, people who've had uh, kyphosis or scoliosis, mm -hmm. And uh, even paraplegics and patients have been in wheelchairs for long periods of time, their entire body shape is different, yeah. and so you have to be prepared for anything. So the most important point here is to avoid the pancreas, which is a structure on the left side of the screen, uh, which is easily injured. Um, it's, um, and um, if you get a pancreatic leak, it's a bit of a disaster. Um, so, but again, mobilizing all of that to the upper pole is free, it is, is very important. Mm -hmm. Um, in this part, we're now just continuing the dissection, and essentially a, a left nephrectomy is just a dissection of the aorta. Mm -hmm. um, the key, I think the key step is firstly to free the upper pole and then free everything medially until the kidney can be lifted off the aorta. Mm -hmm. And then the then it's it's um, it's but difficult often to mess it up. you don't see a off aorta. This like do you see pulsation at this dissection? You sh you may not see the pulsation, mm -hmm. but you need to uh, by the time you get to the uh, hilum, you really do need to. Ideally, you should have the uh, aorta on view so that uh, it's clear where exactly the, the hilum lies. Mm. Uh, but again, it's different. Each case is different, and it's something that, that's much more important when doing a medial tumor mm. uh, compared to this, which is a much more standard tumor. So in this section, um, you're going to start, I'm going to start opening up uh, gerotus fascia. So the key point is to mobilize the bowel medially 
and then when you think you're in the right spot, roughly uh, is to open Gerota's fascia and uh, get onto uh, psoas major. And then once on psoas major, we then know we're in the right spot, and there you can see the landmark of the gonadal vein, uh, one of the structures that uh, often pick and make bleed. Um, but it can be quite useful in retraction. Um, on this occasion, the gonadal seems to want to go below, so I don't actually need to lift it up. Um, on other occasions, the gonadal may actually be lifted up with the uh, kidney. Um, you can see from this, this view that uh, there's only the hilum left behind now uh, with some fat and uh, the entire posterior part is freed. In this step, we insert, I'm inserting a, um, another retractor and I use a fixed retractor with either a metal pointer or a laparoscopic peanut uh, to lift the kidney up. Uh, this means I can then operate and uh, dissect the hilum out uh, with two hands use, using a sharp dissection rather than uh, bluntly um, dissecting with a sucker uh, with a sucker and hoping for the best this is all part of mobilizing and opening up gerota's anterior to the renal vein um, and so this and um, once it's fully open we can then um, we'll usually find the adrenal uh, vein as well um, it's important to go immediately um, and other structures to note in on a left nephrectomy would be the um, the, the um, lumbar veins as well um, and these often will wrap around the uh, artery and uh, and join the um, the the renal vein, often preventing uh, exposure of the artery. And in this section, I've actually dissected and um, clipped a lumbar vein. You can see the gonadal vein below, and there's another lumbar vein, more lumbar veins posteriorly as well. Uh, these are quite dangerous. Um, if they are avulsed, aside from bleeding, the uh, side on the psoas will retract and continue to bleed and cause a problem. And um, on, in this procedure, there's a little bit of oozing um, already. So green, green hemlock is applied to the lumbar vein. And it is important to consider where you put these hemolocks because later on, especially if you're going to use a stapler, it may interfere with the fire of the stapler, it may get in the way of your stapler. And even if you put uh, hemolocks, uh, you have to be careful not to clip it on. Uh, we also divide the gonadal vein here and further gentle suction reveals a uh, tributary of renal vein probably another small branch of the a uh, small another small um, lumbar vein that um, needs to be dealt with just dissecting this off and um, another green hemorrhoid to um, control this once you clean the vein inferiorly, uh, depending on where the artery is, usually you can see the artery uh, and dissect it gently uh, with the sucker or in this case with scissors by gently stroking the artery. It's important to get rid of all the fascia in front of the artery to just expose the artery. Uh, in order to facilitate, facilitate uh, either putting hemolocks or staples, uh, we usually use uh, uh, hemolocks to control the artery and the vein. So just make sure you can put your instrument and can see your instrument behind your artery. That means then. Uh, it means that you've done enough. All right, so here we're putting a purple hemlock on the, uh, the renal artery. I usually use two on the stay side and one at the top. But sometimes um, if the uh, artery is not easy to mobilize fully, then I'll put a single clip on it to control the inflow. And then I'll uh, take the vein and then come back and finish the artery off. I think that's exactly what you did here. You're dissecting more around the vein and take yeah. the vein. Yeah. And here we have to be careful of adrenal vein as well, don't we? Yeah, I think that looks. Looking at it, it's a bit more. It's a bit lower. Not this one, but yeah, yeah not that one there. Yeah, but yeah. certainly in mo mobilizing in this upper. 
corner um, no, and there's adrenal yep. yeah, the adrenal veins there so I think in this one uh, we could probably spare the adrenal vein mm -hmm. and uh, go above it but I think sometimes uh, depending upon the case and if it's a big upper pole tumor I might take the adrenal as well yeah. but in this one I think it's reasonable to preserve the adrenal and the adrenal vein Gold clip. Yep, so we're using some gold heme locks um, on this. And again, that's I find this is a little this little cutting with the curve and uh, lifting upwards is a useful way to get a little bit of an extra couple of millimeters of a cuff. Yeah. Um, that's important so that heme lock doesn't stick off. Yeah, I think I think it's useful if you can manage it. And look, I just tend to use two heme locks. Mm. I think. Uh, some people may put on a lot more. I'm not sure if it adds any security, as I suspect most of the tissue between all these hemlocks will just become ischemic and will uh, will necrose anyway. Mm. So it's actually probably only the first one that's doing anything mm. useful. Mm. And now the artery is uh, exposed and uh, can be dealt with uh, easily. And uh, there's also that band of tissue. Again, most of these things around the hilum are best. It's best to uh, just clip them. Yeah. If you're using a harmonic, it's uh, smaller things can be dealt with. Clean yeah, I think it's pretty much done. So I think another couple of clips, and uh, and then the next step will be to uh, to just take the rest, disconnect the rest of the kidney. Again, just put the purple clips too on the stay side. I tend to avoid metal clips as I always do worry that they could slide off. Yeah. But uh, um, they are safer in some ways in that uh, one does not need to dissect the distal to the clip. You can just slide it on, but they're definitely not as secure. Um, now we're just left with a band of, of tissue and uh, the next step will be to try and peel the, separate the kidney and the adrenal. Um, so open the gerotus fascia of the upper pole. Yeah, and you can see there's so much space because the, yeah. the spleen's mm. all the way out the way. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you have any staples left over, if you've used a vascular mm. stapler, you can always staple mm this area as well as long as you know where the upper pole of the kidney is um, again this is another area where there can be some significant blood vessels um, so you need to dissect it rather than just cut straight across it um, sometimes if it is a little bit vascular I'll just run a row of uh, whatever heme locks are left over no. to, uh, to just control it um, I often turn the diathermy up at this point as no. well to 50 or 60 no. as I'm going through it uh, just to reduce the bleeding and here I've actually put a heme lock on something on the upper pole mm -hmm. <coughs> on the fat coming through which would have had some vessels in it but again you can use a harmonic you can use a ligature mm -hmm. you can use whatever you like yeah. um, and obviously if you use one of those it's pretty easy it doesn't bleed anywhere near as much here I think key here is to thin out as much as possible and then do whatever Absolutely. you and, and having good traction that's very important yeah, yeah. and so using that fiddlestick yeah. to your one um, side and then your left hand retracting yeah. on the other side yeah. Yeah. and also when you when dissecting if you're going to need to lift up the kidney yeah. which is go is what I'm doing with my left hand while cutting with the right hand I would use um, a grasper that's open so mm -hmm. that it gives better traction yeah. on either side yeah. and uh, now we can see the source in yeah. the upper pole yeah, it's pretty much finished yeah. so now we just down. yeah just take the ureter it's finished so that looks like the gonadal there so you get gonadal fell down and there's yeah. the ureter um, which uh, needs a clip so I think you always do the upper pull and then come down to the lower pull so you sort of lift you lift it up from what's the right way you sort of dissect from the below isn't it rather than going from above and I find that quite sort of you easier almost to oh like that yeah yeah, yeah. well I, I think you just the main thing is that when you take once you've done the high limb and everything else and you're just left with the kidney yeah. to immobilize um, again the time efficient way to do it is to just get into the right plane once Absolutely, and then just get yeah. on the back wall yeah. um, and then do it so it doesn't really matter where you do it from it's wherever is working for you so usually it's reasonable to do a bit from the top and a bit from the bottom and do whatever you want 
whichever order you want. I think it's important to try and stay in the right layer so you don't go into the psoas fascia because I think the patient gets more post-operative pain and I think staying out of the mm -hmm. um, the uh, abdominal wall is also yeah. a good thing. So find that sort of spider web like flimsy tissue. Yeah, the loose areola tissue. Yeah, loose areola tissue. Yeah. Good traction to yeah. show you. Yeah, exactly. And don't go into the abdominal wall. There'll mm. always be some vessels on mm. the side here. I think yeah. I have the ability to find them um, unerringly. I make them or I make mm. them bleed every time. Mm. Um, but again, this is where with the diathermy on um, on high, mm. you can get it done fairly quickly and yeah. efficiently. And you can use high diathermy settings around here because it's away from the bowel or vessels. Yeah. And the other step, once it's completed, is to make sure that the kidney is definitely free. Mm. Um, the last thing you want to do is try and bag it and then rip yeah. a small arterial art artery or something off mm. um, because then it can um, cause significant bleeding. Yeah. This is just cutting the last bit of the peritoneum. Yeah, just always have a good traction and find the areola yeah. tissue plane. And understanding the embryology of the retroperitoneum mm. is actually the key to understanding all mm. these um, these layers. and. Um, while unfortunately I think they've taken embryology out of the urology <laughs> exams, which I think is a travesty, um, it's actually something which is worth learning, and especially in conjunction with, with LAST's understanding the, the en entire retroperitoneum yeah. um, and the physiological hernia and how all the structures got stuck down, yeah. actually explains all these planes to you very clearly. I think so. And I think often when you bag the kidney, it's important to set it up so that it almost just slides in to the bag, like sometimes I when I was beginning when I was doing it earlier I found it difficult I yeah I think you have to put to the kidney back onto solace mm. and then have a grasper holding it up almost so that when That's the right. bag goes in it goes underneath, underneath it, it yeah. and I mean I tend not to change the port to a 15 millimeter mm. port but mm. I think if I was definitely going to need it then I'd probably just put a 15 millimeter mm. port mm. in to start with mm. um, and, uh, and do it that way but I usually just pull the port out Yep. change the gas onto different onto one of the five millimeter ports mm -hmm. um, and um, do it that way. I usually leave a drain in even though I'm not quite sure why we need it. <laughs>